you're going to do something else and that's going to be our thing. So when I started dating, uh, there was a few first dates that I had something I hadn't really experienced much in my life, you know, people with past trauma. And so I had to learn how to work around that. And it was not something that I had ever done in my life. So for, for me, that was something that I had to get used to. It's something that I had to accommodate for the person I was dating. If they had, you know, social anxiety issues, okay, well, we can't do this. We can't do that. Oh, I don't like being in dark places. So can do the, the things that I, I had my, the- that I had in the past, trying to come up with something different, something new, something fun on a date. It, it actually turned out pretty, pretty fun. It, it was a challenge, but I like challenges. So that's why I married Jay. Uh, um, I'm so, still trying to figure out why I married you. I'm currently just you. staring we, straight ahead at the lamp. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at neither of these two. So you're still trying to figure out why you married me? Yeah, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I'm not sure either. So. <sighs> but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can be a thing with your polycule, that, especially if you're uh, trying specifically to include everybody. Uh, you want to do movie night, but somebody's afraid of the dark. Mm-hmm. You want to go out to eat at your favorite restaurant, but person C can't eat any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it can be big things like okay, if they uh, if we get even close to this, their skin starts breaking out and melting off their body, or it can be small things that are still very valid. Like you want to invite everybody out to fondue, except but for person D, who is like lactose intolerant. intolerant. So or. Oh, wouldn't it be great to have a barbecue with a vegan friends with person B being vegan, Mm -hmm. which I mean, there's ways to do it. And absolutely you can you can. But that's the thing is that we we're already thinking in terms of accommodation. Right. And And other people need to kind of because we want to include them in our lives. And so we're going to do what we want to do to make sure that they're there because they're important. Right. Accommodation, accessibility, it's all key. Mm-hmm. It all goes in. And if you, the more people you can make feel included, and wouldn't it be great if society thought this way too, of just, we include everybody. We include everybody we can all the time. And, as much as possible. Right. And not make them feel guilty about it. Because mm-hmm. I guarantee you, your partner or friend or family member that knows special accommodations have to be made for them, they are already feeling some kind of way about it. Whenever you have somebody that does need special accommodation, whether it's food or social situations or whatever, and you prep for that in advance and take care of that beforehand, they are elated when it comes down to like, oh, you already thought about me. Well, yeah, that's just who we are. Sometimes it's it's a kind of a weird opposite thing. Uh, sometimes your accommodation is not including the person. Uh, not because you don't want them there, not because you... But we had a situation here. There was a party and it was a friend of a friend who came over and didn't know us. So mm-hmm. was automatically uncomfortable and spent most of the time on the stairs by with headphones themselves. by themselves with uh, noise canceling headphones on. And it was awkward for everyone. It's one of those things where even people who are socially awkward or have a lot of social anxiety, sometimes if if there's a little bit of lead in mm-hmm. before that you bring them to a strange place. Sometimes that can alleviate a lot of stress. Yep, you can you can just say, okay, look, I have this friend. He's at this party. He's an asshole. I'm just gonna. Have, you know, I'm the friend you have to warn somebody about <laughs> before you introduce him. Yeah, if you ever hear somebody introduce you as you get used to him, um, <laughs> that's that's not a compliment. <laughs> just, yeah. I don't know because I we do have a friend, in, you know, back in our hometown where he is that type of person. Where you have to, like, look, you'll get used to them. And it's one of the things that once you do, this dude is hilarious. But he has some jokes. Mm. <laughs> but he'd give you the shirt off of his back. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, or he'll show up at the hospital with a little teddy bear uh, after somebody just gave birth that with a t-shirt that says, I hate babies. Yeah, that was an interesting elevator ride from what he said. The reason why I say not including somebody might actually be a, a good accommodation right. is because when you ask them if they want to go, mm-hmm. that in and of itself can be putting pressure on them that they're not ready for. Mm -hmm. That is like, I didn't ask for this and now I feel pressured because I don't want to say no because I don't want to be the downer. Or you could have just done it and let me know you were doing it. Uh, But the the person uncomfortable in social situations might need some more lead in than just a couple days notice and, hey, we're going to go do this thing now. It's, It's stuff you have to think about. But again, the conversation going in to a relationship, to into a polycule and 
you know, it's like, okay, well, this partner doesn't like doing this. This person, partner doesn't like doing that. But that that's where you can like, okay, well, on this day, we're going to do this. And on this day, we're going to do that. And that's kind of, you just got to kind of work around it. Uh, that guy that was suffering so much when uh, he came to our party might have benefited from meeting any one of us beforehand one-on-one beforehand Mm -hmm. uh or in a very closed situation where it wasn't stressful and it was just casual where we just had a private dinner or something and not a humongous Mm -hmm. celebration Mm -hmm. with lots of noise and lots of things going on i felt terrible for him i wanted to give him a hug but he obviously didn't want to be touched yeah that was that was obvious. So uh, other other types of accommodations, um, a couple of the jobs that I've had required me to be on call, which would be on call twenty four seven, and oh, required. God, did it ever? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> uh, but at the time, it was all four of us in in one bed. I would have to my phone would ring constantly throughout the night, and I would really just you know wake up spend a couple hours working on an issue then go right back to bed and the second i would put my head down i'd have to get up again because my phone was ringing and this would wake everybody up in the bedroom until i got to the point i was like look i'm just going to sleep on the couch when i'm on call and no one else got any sleep period and that was it ironically and- sleeping on the couch was the cure for the phone ringing mm-hmm. like it would stop yeah, so yeah. she would go out there then yeah. the phone would stop ringing mm-hmm. and he did not sleep well on the couch not at all so, Even I, though it's a super comfy couch. It is. But I could not, it, it was just one of those things, I couldn't understand. I'm listening to him greet with a professional, polished quality at three in the morning after getting woken up six or eight times in a row. And he still sounds like radio DJ quality, you know, I'm sitting there going, how are you even finding the phone? It, it, <laughs> years of practice, years and years of practice of the, you know, you can't tell somebody, what the fuck do you want? And, you know, that's the, <laughs> yeah, that's the professionalism that has to come in. It's like, you got to take the, what the fuck do you want to, hi, how can I help you? That's the, leave me the fuck alone. I just need a couple hours of sleep. But he did it. He pushed through. And, and so uh, did everybody else. And they really accommodated the, my needs because uh, after spending all night on the phone, I'd have to get up at eight o'clock in the morning with like, 10 minutes of sleep mm-hmm. and have to go to work for eight hours, nine, 10, sometimes 12 mm-hmm. hours, and then come home and do it all. Like, you know, real wash, rinse, repeat type of thing. So, yeah. and that took me out of the, the, the family for some time, you know, it would, I would be exhausted for a, at least a week after that. Mm-hmm. Well, we had to be very lenient with date nights where instead of going out anywhere, we would spend it at home. And most of the time, generally, it would be spent, you know, somebody rubbing his shoulders while he's working on fixing issues or things like that. But then there were times where we couldn't even be with him because we had, he had to miss out on things going on with the kids or he had to be absent for whatever reason or just missing him laying beside you in bed or, you know, there's, there were a lot of things that we had to accommodate him for in that way. Not only that, but emotionally and physically and mentally, he was just completely drained, Mm -hmm. depleted. Yeah. And so we had to be understanding and... And it always seemed like on-call times always seemed to happen right when a other big, stuff was going on. Yeah, right when a big event would happen or something like that. It I was would always, not be able to do it. Yeah, it was always right then. And a lot of people, a lot of accommodations that you need to make for people in your polycule are like that. Somebody has chronic pain and this is one of those if somebody has an invisible illness it's it's especially challenging mm-hmm. because yeah. and i mean for them because they're fine they're fine one minute and then suddenly the pain comes back and, and not fine. it's always going to feel to other people like the pain happened right when we were about to do this thing right it's like oh how convenient yeah but yeah. at the same time it's like you have to realize that it's not their fault mm-hmm. that they're doing the best they can and it it's worse for them than it is for the rest of the people in the polycule is wow i here i am again here this thing is happening again and here it goes again this is my life this is it's so amazing and you feel bad you, you feel bad for for taking the fun out of the situation for having to remove yourself from the situation or from missing out on from it. missing out all of those things are going in and other people are looking at you and you know there's some there's at least a little bit of that inkling of are they serious right now? Yeah. Like you were totally fine like five seconds ago. Once I said I want to do this, now are you going to do yeah. this? But for those who, those of you who are uh, familiar with spoon theory, those spoons can go away quick. 
and sometimes they go away without warning. Spoon theory is a uh, a theory related to chronic illness, particularly where a spoon represents a unit of energy that the person has to deal with, and anything they do takes a spoon away or two. And sometimes, surprisingly, it'll take away three. And there's almost no way for them to predict how many they're going to end up with at a particular time per day. So they can work really hard in the morning and have nothing left in the afternoon, or they can be careful in the morning and have enough in the afternoon and appear to be perfectly fine all day. So it's it's one of those people with chronic illness, especially when they have those kind of needs, people will say, people will make the, the statement that they're faking being sick. They're actually faking being well. Yeah, right. That's more so the case. And then you've faked being well for so long that your body just finally shuts down and you can do absolutely nothing. It's like, nope, not doing it now. It's frustrating on both ends. Your partners generally get upset because you've been pushing yourself too hard and not allowing yourself the rest that you need. And you're frustrated at yourself because, you know, you've pushed yourself too hard and now you're suffering repercussions for it. And just like your air conditioner only ever breaks at the hottest point of summer Mm -hmm. and your heater only breaks at the coldest part of the winter because that's when they're the most stressed because that's when they're being used the most. That's when it's going to break. When you have the ultra fun things that you're trying to do together or the ultra important things or the milestone events that you're trying to uh, make memories out of, that's when those accommodations are really going to be important. That's when the things are going to happen. It happens all the time in every family, uh, but in a polycule, it's it, there's just more because there's more people and mm-hmm. there's more priorities and there's more things that have to happen in order to make other stuff happen. Especially when you have kids, mm-hmm. especially yes. small kids. Small kids get ill quickly Mm -hmm. or unexpectedly or they have something happen or or they break a leg or they need to go to the hospital or you know they just are not doing life that day and (laughs) And i i applaud you know moms in general or you know single moms single parents single parents in general because my mom is a single mom and i was raised you know as that way to go guys (laughs) you're doing the best you can with what you got go for it so whenever you get into a relationship with somebody you need to make them aware and you know i understand you know some people said no i can't do this well you know what if if somebody tells you they can't you know deal with whatever you have then they can't deal with you they're not the person for you they're not the person for you Mm mm-hmm it could be painful, but it's so much better to make that discovery early and realize, okay, no, this this is not going to work. I can't function without this. Uh, this is an accommodation. It's basically just a case of your needs are not going to match. Right. And regardless of how hard you try or how hard you try to force the issue, it's not going to happen. And that's plain and simple. You have to be with somebody that is accommodating. I think a lot of poly people are to begin with. If you're if you're poly, you already kind of know what you're getting into. But like the new new to poly relationships, maybe not so much. Well, a lot of times too, you've gone through the process, so you know what questions to ask, and you know what your needs are. You know your capabilities and being able to provide people with whatever needs they may be. So if partner A has this need, you know your capabilities of being able to actually accommodate that need. Mm-hmm. And that comes with experience and time. And you may have good intentions starting off, but then you realize, I don't know if I can make this a part of my life, if I can accommodate this. Well, it's really important that you figure that out so that you don't waste your time and you don't waste your partner's time because they already probably feel some sort of guilt or burden for the needs that they have. And if you can't accommodate them or make them feel safe to be able to be that person, because we all are human and we all Uh, have needs and we, in order to exist together, need to be able to accommodate each other and be flexible and be open with ourselves and open with our partners. And I think that's what it really boils down to is just being super honest with yourself and with your partner. Like when we first met Crow and X, it wasn't long after the beginning of our relationship that my chronic illnesses started flaring up. Mm -hmm. So it became very apparent to them that, okay, this is something that we're going to have to compensate for and accommodate and be understanding of and try to grasp it enough to be able to be there and supportive. When Crow accompanied me to Houston for my medical issues, it became very, very clear and apparent. And when you have to sit and 
watch your lovers and partners in pain or support them through something that you know they will never fully heal from and it will it will be a repetitive thing and the clock is ticking and you never know when it's going to actually flare up again then that's something that you also have to realize that 